Hi everybody, here's Arkady again. Welcome to my technology channel. As you know, I talk a lot about laser cladding as one of the key developed technologies on the market. We see laser cladding progresses in many applications such as aerospace and automotive, for example, brake discs. And many of you probably don't know that one of the key to success for laser cladding technology is related to optical components and nozzles which can feed your filler material to the surface. One of the key pioneer companies to develop such tools and sell high quality products to market is a small company in the west of Germany which is called HD Sonderoptik. And today I have a sales manager Sada and head of engineering Jonas with me who will give their insights to the amazing world of optical components and nozzles for laser cladding technology. Akali, thank you for the visit here. I'm happy to share with you some um, uh, technology knowledge with uh, you as well as with the visitors on your YouTube channel. And I'm happy that uh, we have here some time to talk about the features of our products and the advantages of our products. We start our interview with discussions about coaxial and multi-jet powder nozzles. Uh, coaxial powder nozzles um, where you can generate a powder cone then focus to a certain position um, where you can get the uh, most benefits of the um, powder feeding and here we have um, Hino 5.0 and Hino 5.0W which are um, the uh, the powder nozzles for higher um, laser power application with um, directly and indirectly water-cooled nozzle tips. And on the right side, I, we have the, um, the powder nozzle for the uh, new patented um, uh, laser application called Spila. A separate powder injection for laser application. This is the um, powder nozzle which we have developed with the RWTH DAP. And uh, here we have the advantages of, um, of um, uh, two different powder focus positions. So we are able to, um, to um, separate uh, one powder focus into two powder focus in a vertical and horizontal uh, position. Very interesting, but for a user, what advantages will bring the separation between uh, set axis for the powder feed? Um, if you have two kinds of powder materials and you would like to, um, to um, apply it onto your surface, then um, if you have the application on the uh, same position, then um, both of them um, uh, absorb the same energy. Okay. So what we are looking for is to have a separated powder injection so that one powder material absorbs more um, of the laser radiation and the other one absorbs less. So at that way we are able to apply two different powder materials with two different um, uh, temperature for, uh, for the absorption. So you mean like if powders have different melting temperatures, different density, they might get different radiation from laser yes, exactly. and as a result they can get less melting or dissolution in case of carbides and it can also help avoid cracking during deposition. Is it correct? That is, that is correct, yes. We have a um, way how we can measure the powder focus diameter. So um, we are able to, um, to provide a powder focus diameter of 0.5 mm. So um, uh, with our powder nozzles, first of all, we have two different or more different nozzle tips. So you have the same um, nozzle body and here we can adjust different nozzle tips according to your requirement, according to your need. So if you are looking for, um, for an application where you need to have 0.5 mm of powder focus diameter, then we are able to um, provide here a nozzle tip. But if you would like to have a bigger um, powder focus diameter with the same setup, then we can provide a different nozzle tip with the larger standoff, which gives you a, a bigger powder focus diameter. So we are able to vary the powder focus if we change the nozzle tip. And the other uh, option you have here is we can change the gap between the uh, inner and the outer cone. So we can increase the gap and that gives you within the same nozzle tip, you are able to um, vary the powder focus diameter. That gives you a huge flexibility. Well, I, to summarize it, those type of nozzles can work with different powder spot sizes. If you need to feed more material, you can switch the nozzle tip 
or keep the same nozzle tip but switch the focus and get higher powder focus means like working with 3-4 millimeter spot that means these nozzles are capable to work also on a high power level with say 20 and above kilowatts which is actually what we nowadays use for certain applications and uh, last question about here we see different colors of the surface yellow silver and uh, let's say bronze color like typical for copper why you have so different colors what is the material of nozzles you thought about cooling and do you use some coatings to protect your surface in life of nozzles um, yes yeah. so i would like to start with the coaxial powder nozzle um, in general uh, to get a better cooling, we are using copper material, but we apply several um, coating onto the nozzle tip to increase the service time of the nozzle tips and to be able to uh, provide a solution for mass production. So we have customers who are working with um, some carbides and they have delivered 1.5 ton with a single nozzle tip without um, working on the nozzle tip to refurbish. And then here we have the, um, the um, multi-jet powder nozzle here we are using some special inlays okay. so with that inlays first of all we are able to apply different um, powder focus diameter so we have inlays with one millimeter inner bore diameter uh, up to 2.5 millimeter inner bore diameter so with that way we are able to um, take the same nozzle uh, body but then insert different um, inlays and thus we are able to uh, uh, achieve different powder focus diameter but these um, inlays, they are some special materials. This is a hard metal tube which we are using. Hard metal tubes. Hard metal tubes. Okay. And these are, uh, uh, these are provided so that we have here again a better um, out outcome in terms of service lifetime. So to summarize it for our visitors, if we have, uh, let's say, different nozzles, the lifetime of these nozzles typically depending on material you use and ceramic materials like tungsten carbides or any other hard materials as Sada just explained the flow of around 1.5 ton of powder has left no marks of wear on your coated nozzles so that would give you an estimation of lifetime of nozzle tip but Sada as I understand the whole uh, body what we see here is a full nozzle but this small tiny thing which is actually suspended to wear mostly it's a nozzle tip and it's replaceable yes that's correct exactly and this price is uh, much more cost efficient compared to changing the whole nozzle yes that, that's good that's what we are looking for so um, we are able to measure the nozzle tip so we are able to deliver a replaceable tip for your application so if it is worn out we can guarantee you that we are able to achieve the same powder focus the same powder efficiency with a new solution Sada, final question. When would you choose coaxial nozzle and when would you choose multi-jet nozzle? Um, multi-jet powder nozzle, I would only recommend if you are using an application where you need to uh, tilt the head, completely 3D application. Yeah. Only if you have to tilt in more than 90 degrees, then you are using a multi-jet powder nozzle. Yeah. If you are using a powder which, is, um, uh, which has a high hardness, then I would recommend also a um, multi powder. In any other cases, I would go always for a coaxial powder nozzle. Why? High deposition efficiency? Yes, exactly. What is the difference between them two? Um, here you are able to achieve, uh, um, let's say you are able to get a smaller powder focus diameter. Yeah. That's one option. You are able to adjust your powder focus according to your requirement. So yeah. I can, I can um, change the powder focus diameter and the powder focus position with my additional process parameter setup such as shielding gear. Here with the um, multi-jet powder nozzle, I am not able to adjust my powder focus according yeah. to my um, process uh, setup. So that's why here I am able to, um, to vary my uh, outcome yeah. with some simple adjustment and that's why we are going here for the um, coaxial powder nozzle. Very interesting. Sada, thank you very much for those insights. I hope it was also interesting for our viewers. You realize what are the differences between coaxial nozzles, multi-jet nozzles, where it can be used, what features you have inside, cooling channels, working with high power, and most important also extreme high deposition efficiency. I believe if you have more technical questions, you can directly reach to Sada and get more insights and also uh, top number uh, recommendations for the right selection of a right tool for your application. 
HD is on the optic, as you can find from the company name, which gives a direct translation for word Zonder Optic, which means special optical tools, means that the HD is also focused on developing special products for the market. It might be, for example, internal diameter cladding tools. It might be special tools designed for special entering and penetrations in certain areas where we don't have enough space, where normal coaxial or multi-injection jet nozzles don't work. And also it means focusing on new developments like high-speed laser cladding, also known as AHLA in German. And uh, Jonas, probably you can tell us what is so cool behind those optical tools. Here we have our newest development in optics. It's an uh, optic that we developed in a project. This optic is special about the integrated media supply. So it has an integrated powder supply and an integrated water supply. So these uh, nozzle tips, they are based on high law 4.0. They are also directly cooled in the optics. Also, we have uh, our protection window and our uh, focusing lens integrated. The focusing lens is also able to be adjusted about plus minus 10 millimeters. Also we have integrated in this optics uh, camera and pyrometer for control of the process. Premium. Okay, but some of your tools are also additively manufactured. That's correct. For example here we have our, it's called a LAS. This is uh, additive manufactured in LPBF process. This uh, was developed for a special application where we had to get into a very small um, hole inside, an, um, inside a part and to uh, repair it with LMD. And this teeny part here is a mirror. Exactly, that's a mirror. So you even developed a very special small mirrors which can fit and to focus a small spot size on the surface. Actually, the focus is uh, made by a focusing lens yeah. inside the optics and the mirrors only uh, reflecting the Only reflecting. So. But what's special about it, it's here we have uh, the mirror is directly water-cooled and also have um, some shielding gas only for the mirror and this is integrated in this very small uh, piece. Okay, now I understand why you have used additive technology to be able to design cooling and gas channels inside this small part to be able to cool and keep the mirror for long work. Exactly. It's impressive, really impressive. So, and Jonas, also a couple of questions here. I see here uh, probably something like 250 millimeter width tool. Is it the maximum you can get deep in or is it possible to make it longer, smaller diameter? What are the limitations? Yes, so with this uh, optics we can uh, go into bores that are, are around 90 millimeters. Okay. And um, we will put the collimation here and then we are able to put like... Um, an extension. Extension. Okay. And go like uh, very deep because we will take the uh, father uh, with us. Also, so you can take the fiber with you and using right extension you can go in depth keeping the diameter of 90 millimeters. What is impressive here, the fact that it is a 90 millimeter high speed nozzle of high quality. In Sada's presentation we learned that this is functional up to high power level and we can achieve a surface covering rates around 3 to 4 square meters per hour. Is it correct? That's correct. I'm impressed. I would really wish to have one of those tools also in my facility. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you very much, Akad. The cooperation has started with Fraunhofer Ilti University in 2004, where hired together with certain, let's say, gurus in the laser cladding applications have developed first prototypes and also now worked on industrialization. So the roots of company are all in science. Those people know how to develop parts and now the industrialization stage with Jonas and Sada has taken place. Let's see where the story of HD Zonda Optic gonna bring us. I kindly encourage you to look on their products, to try them, to get your own opinion and also to support these guys.
gosh, it has been a couple of years since I last time had my laser glasses on. And uh, now we're going to see the process running. That's why we also need laser safety to be sure that we don't get harm for eyes. Thank you.